Hey, good morning, afternoon, and evening, wherever you guys are in the world. It's so great to see you again. Maria from Alabama, right? Is that where you are? And Amy, and I know where you are. You're up in New York. Jared, of course, Chicago. And Beth Ann is with us. Hey, cool. Um, Leewitz, in I'm not sure where you are. And... Um, Birmingham. Okay. Richard is in Cincinnati. We're all over the place. This is great. Jared's in the Midwest. Okay. Well, you guys, thanks for joining us. We're going to have some fun uh, critiquing your photos and, you know, taking up uh, whatever questions you might have in regards to them, too. So why don't we get started here? I am Mark Silver, photographer, educator, and author here in Carmel, California. And our show, not that, there we go. Our show is brought to you by our friends at Bay Photo Lab. And again, you can get 10% off on these cool exposers. That's what I've got behind me here. That's what that is. It's printed on that vinyl and you can change the, you can change it. It actually stretches, which is pretty cool. Your uh, photo stretches right over it and you hang it on the wall and it kind of floats off the wall. It's a very cool thing. 10% off there. And uh, you're going to still get 10% off on photo gifts. There's a whole variety of them here. You can pick from, you know, these little uh, frame things and boxes and various prints and even masks. That's very cool. And you'll get 25% off on your first order. Bay Photo is awesome. Please support them. Support yourself because we want you to be doing prints, right? And that's super important. I'm not going to forget this now. I want to remind you that if you haven't already done so, would you please subscribe and enable the bell that will tell you when our new uh, shows are being broadcast. Okay, I'm going to start with my own little photo story. This is from two days ago. So here in Carmel, California, let me just switch to this version here. Whoops, I can't do it that way. Carmel, California, we sort of have a reverse seasons here. Our best weather is not in the summer because we get a lot of fog. Our best weather is um, actually right about now, November, December, January. And we had uh, a couple of days ago a really huge swell. So I went out. I actually have uh, tried to surf in this spot in the past. It's very difficult and very dangerous. You can't tell from this photograph. Now, this is just a series I'm going to show you. You really can't tell how big that wave is because there's nothing to gauge it by. That could be six feet, could be eight right? Turns out it's probably 25 feet, but you really have no way of telling it. Um, what do you think? Is that a very interesting photograph just by itself? I don't think so. I, that's why I didn't choose it as my <laughs> primary photograph. But I went out at, uh, uh, as the sun was setting, you can see the sky behind us here, and uh, very bright orange you know, going on, and um, I, but I wanted to capture a surfer, so I had to be patient because these waves are, as I said, are very tricky to catch. If you don't know how surfing works, you have to paddle ahead of the wave so that by the time it catches up with you, you're going at, you're going at the same speed, then it will pick you up. If you can't do that, the wave will just sort of pass by you or under you, and all manner of things, treacherous things can happen. Also, you can get stuck in the wrong spot and the wave will come crashing down on you. That's de definitely no fun. I've broken several surfboards that way. Not a fun experience. Okay, so I waited patiently for the surfer to appear and here he is. Okay, so this is my first version of it. I think you find that's a much more interesting photograph. Now let's look at the relationship of this guy who's probably, let's just say he's six feet tall. He's crouched down a little bit, so maybe he's five and a half feet tall. How many of him can you stack up on this wave? Five, four, you know? That means it's somewhere between 20 and 25 feet. That's a big wave. 
Now, I, what I love about this is the reflection in the in the uh, wave itself. You see that right there, and um, that was just a bonus. I wasn't really aware of that when I was taking that shot. Um, now, I cropped it a little bit more. There's a lot of white water in the foreground here, which you know it, it's interesting. I was just reading a book on filmmaking this morning. And the point he was making is your eye travels from left to right and from bottom to top. So you want to look at your how you're filling your, your uh, space accordingly. Now, this works well because we're traveling from left to right, and boom, there's the surfer. But there's a, there is a lot of stuff you have to get through, a lot of white water you got to get through on the bottom before your eye gets to the surfer. So I just trim that a little bit. It needs to be there because it's definitely, if I cut that out completely, it would just remove a big element of this picture. But you can see the difference here. I just reduced it a bit more. So we're more... Bam, right there is the surfer. And I think that works better as a crop. I didn't want to lose any of the power of this way with all that action and spray going off here. And all this foam represents just a massive amount of water coming down through this wave and then just hitting this section here. It's scary. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, the amount of power in a wave is just unbelievable the force of a wave and if you fell off you fall off of this this guy's a really good surfer so he's just coming right down the line the way he should if you fell off underneath this you're gonna feel it because it's just like a freight train literally going over your head and it can be kind of frightening there's another wave here behind us which is cool there's you know there's some more stuff going on but i i believe that that little bit of a crop makes it uh, makes it more of an interesting photograph what do you think i'm not adverse to cropping especially because i was pretty far away on this to begin with uh, i don't i think i was at 200 millimeters um you know and it just does it help your story or not well in this case it does and um there's a little more processing i need to do on this i've got a couple of spots there there's one there that's not good couple of little sensor spots I'll fix but you know I just pulled these out quickly for you guys but notice again empty wave not so much going on to put your eye on better but I think we're doing better here what do you guys think do you agree um Beth Ann says I'll just pop her up here why not so wonder if it would look uh with less foreground water and more background, but still keep the wave. Um, yeah, I, I don't think so. I mean, just for me, I feel like I want to see the, the build up to the wave itself. And I might have tried that. I don't think I went too far in that direction. But, I, you know, it's part of the wave and it does lead your eye up there. Hey, I like the way it shows your picture here, too. This is a cool thing. Okay. Um, so I like the trees in the background. Thank you. Yeah, that was way across the bay here. It's a, quite a ways away. And that's, of course, compressed by the longer lens. That's Pebble Beach over there. You probably heard of it in the golf world. It's one of the greatest series of golf courses in the world. And what people don't often realize, there's great surfing all around. And I am a surfer, so <laughs> I've hit all these spots. All around here, this is a matter of minutes from my house, so it's close by, and it's a place I've served many times. Okay, well, that's just wanted to kind of go over that. Let's dive into your photographs. So, Jared, you want to tell us about this one? Yeah, so this one is from Antonio, uh, and he said that he got this early in the morning so he could do a long exposure without people around. And then he converted it to black and white due to the fact that it is an older structure. So it's uh, the uh, Treve Fountain. I think yeah. that's how you say that. The three, it's in Rome. I've been there. I've photographed this. Um, 
<clears throat> I think black and white works really well. Uh, you know, it it is. I can't tell how much color was in the shot, you know, with the sky or whatnot, but I think it works really well. A um, couple of things. Just from a technical standpoint, I'd probably, you know, you can correct this. The building's leaning back. And with Lightroom, possibly other, uh, certainly Photoshop, but Lightroom and Photoshop, you can easily correct that, which would make that, a little you know like look like the building is straight up not not leaning back um, with older cameras like this view camera here you would you would correct it by taking the lens plane and moving that back and forth you did it uh, with the camera itself you could still do that with a tilt shift camera a lens but I that's something I would just fix because it, it'll it'll help you know, it's what our eye is used to. It's like, you know, one thing is just really think in terms of what people, how people see things with their eyes. And if it, if it's kind of jarring, like it's a little different, it, I mean, you could do it on purpose and that could be something, but, um, you know, why not fix that? So I would do that. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a shot that is kind of a, what I call location transitional shot. It shows the fountain, um, maybe, again, if it's part of a series, like somebody you know is standing next to the fountain, you know, you've, you've established where we are. Maybe we go in for a close-up of um, somebody you're traveling with, and that, that starts a series. Okay, who's next? All right, our next one is we're going to take a look at a photo, getting it up. Uh, this is from Beth Ann Tremper, uh, and the story behind this one is uh, it's a lazy Saturday for the kitty, but not so for uh, her mother-in-law. So this was taken uh, during a indoor piano recital, and she saw her father-in-law relaxing, waiting for the next student to arrive for the virtual um, uh, virtual piano. Oh, interesting. Uh, lesson uh or performance and so uh and yeah okay i again i see this as a series so you're you're photographing that whole uh virtual concert this is one of the images within it um and you know you know i don't yeah i wouldn't consider this the main photo but part of this visual story that you're telling and it you know it's interesting from that standpoint and you've got you got the the cat is he looking i guess he's looking at the cat yeah he, i i kind of got the feeling he's looking out the window but it's, uh, it seems like he is looking at the cat but again i would see it like you know mom at the piano dad sitting over here looking away maybe Kind of dreamily listening to the music or whatever, and I see I, I see this as a you know part of a visual story, you know that has a series of shots in it, and that's you know this is a good point to you know I make this point a lot, but just some photographs stand on their own, and some are part of a whole story, and they either way they work, but they work differently, right? Okay. All right, our next image. This is from Chad Tobin. I saw he just entered into the chat. Uh, ah. This is from him walking around Tokyo with his small rangefinder camera. Now we've had some of your photos before, right? Am I mistaken? Yep. Or, yeah. I like this image. Uh, it's <laughs> we're seeing it through the aquarium. The pointing, the two points, really work to get our eye going somewhere. Otherwise, if those women were not pointing, it, it really wouldn't have much draw to it. But the fact that they're both pointing, you kind of go, wow, what are we looking at here? And I, I, I like the double point because we've got this woman pointing at, at the boy and then the one in front of the boy pointing up. That It's interesting. Isn't it amazing how simple a gesture 
you know, basically you've got two gestures here that makes the photograph really work. You know, Bob Holmes talks about that gesture and punctuation. And you've got frames within frames. Obviously, you've got the foreground of the fish itself. You've got the left-hand frame of the three people. And then you've got the right-hand frame. And those those work well together. And I think black and white really um, works great in this respect. Seeing through the aquarium, even with this reflection on there, whatever that is, I guess just reflecting off the wall behind it or something. I'm not sure. But, it, you know, it's okay because we're, we're kind of seeing through it. And I like the expressions of the boy and the woman pointing at him. And what has she got? Oh, you know, it's really kind of interesting. It looks like she's holding the fish in her hand here. Do you see that? Um, it's yeah, just, right there yeah. Where you're talking, right? yeah, the fish is just in front of her hand. But it, from back here, it looks like she's got a fish in her hand. I thought she had like a plastic fish in her hand. And then we see the fish floating around the, her head and floating in the water. So it's a very interesting photograph. I think it works really well. Uh, and he mentioned that he was uh, in the uh, he was on the sidewalk, and you can see actually the oh, reflection. Oh, that's what that is. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So yeah, you're seeing the street there. Yeah. So, interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Good work. All right. Our next one. This is from Lucas, and the story Some behind cropping, this. Right. Oh wait, no, we did this one. Sorry. We did that. One. No, I didn't get. Uh, here, we'll do this one. This is from Marcus, uh, and he named this one uh, Mornings. Oh, very, very beautiful photograph. I like it a lot. Um, you know, I, it's got a lot of emotion in it. The gesture of the mom's hand here. Um, and the baby reaching up my only here's my only little point I would like to not have these fingers cut off because the little boy is looking I think that's a little boy looking up at them and it would be nice he's kind of looking in that direction it'd be nice to just if you cropped it uncrop it maybe you did you know you just lost it in the frame but remember you're responsible for everything in the frame and I think we want to see that you know that continued connection between the little boy and the mom comes right up at that point I would really like to see that so you know that's if you cropped it in the camera just remember look at the whole frame you are responsible for everything in the frame because it's really still it's a great photograph I just think that's one little point that would help it I like the I'm saying a girl, but I don't know if it is, uh, with her back. It, it's cool because it just shows a contrast. You know, contrast is a really powerful composition tool anyway between we're seeing the faces over here and then we're seeing the back. And there's a lot of texture in the fabric, which is, you know, adds interest. But really it's about the expressions and the mom and the and the child that's really fantastic and her hand is such a great you know that feeling of warmth like she's just holding this child so warmly and the again the delicate sort of touching of the fingers here good job and black and white absolutely works great all right this next photo here is from maria uh, this was taken at a festival in the park last year. Uh, she took it with a 50 millimeter 1.8 prime lens, ISO 400, uh, f-stop 2.8, and one uh, three uh, 3200, oh. 1 3200 shutter speed. Okay, pretty fast. Um, there's no real reason for that because there's not a lot of action. So you. I would bring that shutter speed down and also bring your ISO down as low as you can. Always, 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 always. I, I don't care the hype you hear about, you know, modern cameras 
you know, can handle any ISO. It's not true. You, you, it is not true. Sorry. <laughs> You're going to get noise. And you might as well reduce it. As the photographers I know, the rule of thumb, try to get to 100 on your ISO or as low as you can get. That's basically how we shoot. And sometimes you don't have any choice to raise it, but um, like I had to raise it in my surfing photo because there wasn't a lot of light. I didn't like it, but I had to, and I did have to deal with noise later. Anyway, that's just a technical point. Always bring, and you don't need a hundred, you need like, you could shoot this as a hundredth of a second. No, it doesn't look like a lot of motion. Anyway, um, composition wise, it's not quite pulling my attention anywhere. And there's, I've got three people and I'm not really sure who I should be looking at. The woman on the phone, interesting kind of, you know, the woman sitting here looking pretty dejected for some reason. And this child, so we're, my eye is competing between these three subjects. So that doesn't work because it, again, I'm, you know, I brought this up. It's like saying, look over there, but you're not pointing. You're just kind of making a gesture. Look over there. Look at this scene here. Where? Where do you want me to look? We need to be told where to look. We need to have our object of center of interest very clear. And this is just called a split center of interest. So we've got three centers of interest. So how could you change that? You could you decide where the real strong center of interest is. Let's say it's this woman here. Make the background blurry. So, you know, as as best you can, you could go to, you know, a small aperture and that could blur them out. But really it's going to be more in the composition itself. Something with the the woman here, something happens, like she's moving or speaking or something, and that becomes a strong center of interest. This is just really an important point of just making making a, a clear statement with your camera, because you know photography is a communication tool, and just like any communication, if it's not clear what you mean, you don't get people understanding you it's that simple so you know decide for yourself this is where visualization comes into like wow there's something about this scene I really like but I'm not sure yet what it is so move in on it and just keep shooting until it, it changes and it you get that moment you get that decisive moment okay all right our next one this is from chicagoland jared uh, okay jared obviously this is a self-portrait uh he took this uh while he was out on a photo walk he goes near gazebo often i think he you said need the to lighting change was great it. i don't know oh, have i is no. it not changing no it hasn't changed are we frozen oh, it, What's going i changed on? it on mine that's weird. Uh oh it's on? still on the same image let's see what's okay. going on here you're uh, right, it's showing that in cam, but I have changed it. Uh-oh. Do we need to go Why out of it? We? Go back into it? Try something different? There we go. Okay. okay. Jared. That's Jared already. All right. right. So, so, what, so tell me what he said there, because I kind of missed what I was yeah. thinking about. Um, so this was uh, on a walk. He often goes by a gazebo on his photo walks. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, but he did not have a tripod with him, but never fear. He <laughs> used the gazebo. Good for itself. you. So put the camera onto it, and he set a 10-second timer. And uh, and then he did a couple tests until he could get the focus right. Good job, Jared. I, I like it. And, it you know, you've, you've hit all the – checked all the boxes. You've got the background out of focus. You've got you uh, there. You, you're framed between these posts. Um it works, you know, and I, I love the, 
I, I I love that blurry background. I mean, that's pretty cool because we know there are trees, but are you know your eyes drawn right to your face? Color is great. Um, good job. I like it. All right, all right. This next photo is from, and I'm gonna get your name right this time. I haven't gotten it right yet, but Ma Mache. I think, Mache? Mache. I think that's how you say it. Let me know if I got it right. I'd be really interested to know. Uh, but this is another part of their family reunion series. Okay. Uh, building a house. This is... Um, okay, Mache is the one that we went over yesterday, right? With the change of yep. the exposure. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to have to make the same comment, Mache. I, I would like to see the little girl face uh, brought out. And, um, you know, we're, we're just kind of losing it because there's, your eye is going to go to the brightest part of a scene. That's just the way our eye works. Okay. So where, what's the brightest part of the scene? This white area here, which is not the main subject. You're talking about this? What was that? This? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sorry. I, I got to fix it so my cursor actually shows. I don't know why it doesn't. But our eye is going to go to whatever this little table is, not to her face. And even more, we're competing with this swing over here. So, yeah. Okay. Same. It's basically the same critique. This subject needs more light on her. There's ways you could do that. Rather than in post-processing, there's only so much you can do, you know. If the light isn't there, you can you can move sliders around, but you're limited. Uh, notice how the white is showing up. Well, that tells you there is some light there. So this is where you know you got to have a reflector. Um, again, it could be a white T-shirt, it could be newspaper, it could be a reflector itself, and just like bring some light onto that subject space. You could use a um, a flash, you know, dial down just so we're getting fill light. And that would also, you know, pop out if we, you know, if we use a little flash, we could get a catch light in our eyes, which is going to add more punch to this whole photograph. So go out and I would just start fresh. Try that with, with your next, you know, example of, of, uh, you know these kinds of photographs you're dealing with low light so you have to remember photography means photo means writing with light photo means light graphy is writing we're writing with light so it's your job to write with it you're responsible for everything in the fr oh i see we're in a playhouse here i just saw where yeah. we are okay that framing works really well by the way but um you're writing with light so you can write with it any way you want, just like you write with words. But we want to be, you know, using all those tools that you need to write successfully with light. And it's light, so we got to work with light. we got to get a, you know, in this case, there's not enough light, add to it. That's the formula. Sometimes it's too much light and you got to subtract. You know, there's that side too. Okay. All right. All right. Let's see who's next. Our next one. This is from Rami Miller, and he got this uh, taken of a approaching winter storm in Albuquerque. Wow. Uh, he said that originally it was shot in color, but it wasn't that interesting. But turning it black and white made it much more. Yeah, dynamic. I agree. Those clouds are beautiful. Rami, wait a minute. Now you're San Francisco, right? Don't we usually see you outside of uh, rock? clubs and that sort of thing no uh, I mean, no that's that's glenn oh uh, well, no, no. okay i might have it wrong all right anyway albuquerque uh, you know beautiful clouds um it's the scene is set beautifully and you've got a lot of texture in those clouds i'm kind of hungry for one again a center of focus center of interest something I'd like to see something that said, this is, I want your eye to go right to this. It's going to the whole scene. Fine, that works. And it, you know, it is a scenic and it's a landscape. 
I'm just wondering what, you know, what may be going along that could have brought some attention to a specific point. Uh, sometimes it works well with birds, I find. Birds can, can help draw your eye, like, boom, here's a bird flying across, and it just makes your eye go to that. Um, it's far away, so you can't, you know, maybe if the light shifted and that peak that's in the center here, that's already kind of the brightest part of this photograph, if that peak, let's say the cloud, the, you know, the sun came out, and this is sometimes we're just being really, really patient until all of a sudden the light on that peak is bam, and then it just makes it all come to life. So I think you're there. You got all you got the scene set, but we're waiting for something to to put that strong point of center of interest. Either again, light, bird, something, but everything else is set up and ready to go. Hope that helps. All right, all right. This one, this is from Keith. No caption that came with it. Keith. Good job. Uh, motion, a lot of diagonal lines that adds motion. These guys are pushing up a hill. That's pretty, you know, you get the feeling of exhaustion and strength. And the diagonal lines are what make this work really well. And, uh, you know, we, yesterday we were talking about um, somebody who had added a diagonal to their, you know, they they made the horizon not, not level. And it... And I said, oh, look, you really don't need to do that because the person isn't. First of all, you have a great photograph. You don't need to add to it. In this case, it works really well. I'm assuming they are going uphill. Yeah, they're going uphill. So, and the, we've got the feet of the of the guy on the left on on the on his left in motion. Wow, that's pretty. You know, they've got to get off their bike and push it up this hill, this grassy hill. So it's pretty steep, you know, to do that. Actually, back here, even this guy's off his bike. Interesting. Um, it works really well. Yeah, that guy there. And even where it says verge is kind of interesting. But there's the diagonal and the black and white works really well. So good job. All right. This next one is from our good friend, Amy Douglas. Amy. It's another one of her self-portraits. Self-portrait taken in an old barn. That's very clever, Amy. You do. <laughs> it cracks me up because it looks like this hand is just holding this head with no body connected to it. And I know that's not the case. This is self-portrait? Is that right? Yep. You do really clever self-portraits. You know, and I... <laughs> <laughs> it does crack me up. It it's amusing. I don't know if you meant it to be, but I think it is. Just because wow. It's the Horatio, you know, uh holding the skull. Is that how it goes? I'm, I'm completely anyway. Um and uh the lines coming through the, you know, the slats in the barn are interesting. But our center of interest is right there on that face. So you've done a good job. I don't actually see how you did that. Um, how is your head up there so high? I know that's kind of clever. Of, I don't know. I don't, it makes me wonder how you did it, which is good. And also remember, black areas, dark areas do leave you kind of asking questions. So we're asking a question of like, where is this head coming from? So that's good. Always a good idea to leave your viewer, if you can, asking questions. And the, you've done a good job at that. So, bravo. All right. This next one's from our friend Bert. Uh, he said that uh, the shot uh, from a holiday, uh, from a holiday display yeah. last night. And so uh, he said that uh yeah and then he was just kind of talking about how interesting it was to do something outside that didn't you know involve people that was safe uh during the pandemic 
It's a clever, yeah, I, I can't figure out what it is because what are we doing with all these lamps sort of sitting in the leaves? You know, I guess somebody made a holiday display out of a bunch of lamps. It's not something you would normally see because these are table lamps. They're not, you know, the other ones behind there, you got some some sort of hanging lamps or something. Anyway, it's a, it's a good uh, image that would, again, transitional image that would fit into a larger story the way i see it but it's 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 well composed the lighting is great um you know it's it's got all you know it's working really well and i do see this as part of an, a, a another story so good job bert all right this one is from jabeth uh, this was taken of a chinaberry tree growing out of a window of the abandoned Lolig bathhouse built in 1926 okay. in Texas. And where is it? Texas. It's in Texas. Okay. I would yep. not have guessed. I thought you were going to say in the United Kingdom somewhere. Nope. Black and white works well. Um Okay, I again, I'll just classify this as a transitional shot, uh, part of another image, part of another story. Maybe there's you walking around this bathhouse or with somebody, and it does serve as a transitional or linking image. I don't see it as a standalone image by itself, and it's it's interesting. You know, it's got a, it's got some interest to it. But just keep in mind, I would want to see like at least two other photos maybe connected to it so that it's, it forms part of a series. And that's what we do with our cameras, folks. Sometimes the uh, you know, image will stand by itself and sometimes it has to be part of another scene. So in that regard, you've got it in the black and white. I feel like that's the proper way to you know, develop that. So it's good. Uh, <laughs> back of me he said disturbing. I guess you're talking about. Yeah, about the last one. Yeah. Oh, running upstairs. We yeah we catch up with some of these. Okay, so those guys are running upstairs, really, on bikes. Yeah, you want me to bring that one back up? Yeah, let's go back. I want to see how they're running up a stair. Those yeah, are I think stairs. You can see there's little stairs right there. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, yeah. Uh. Oh, that's why they were dismounting. You got to run upstairs. Okay. Yep. yep. There you go. Good. Good job. Very interesting part Keith. for a race. I mean, yeah. it, look, it, we don't even have to know that. It just still has the actions. You know, the action is inherent in it, and that's good. I think. Uh, I think it shows, though, the wisdom that he went there because he knew probably that he'd yeah. get an interesting shot yeah, of exactly. people taking it. So that's about being aware of your surroundings. Yeah, yeah, you got into your. You got into a good spot because it's very interesting. Okay. Cool. All right. Our Do next we have any other? Uh, I I want to make sure we're um, picking up any important notes here. What the people are making. Um, uh, I good. think Rami was saying that as far as his uh, his one that he caught here of the winter storm and coming, uh, that it was right as it was just getting dark and it started to rain. So I think the storm was hitting him oh, as yeah. he took this one. So he couldn't really stick around. Uh, Oop, lost your head. That was the wrong. Yeah, okay. Sometimes that's just the way it is, you know? Yeah. So be it. Uh, let's see. Somebody had a question here. Let's let's pick up this one here. Oh, yeah. She lost her head. I, I still am curious about how you got that. So here's a question. Let's take it up. How much editing would you approve in a photograph from software is like Silver Effects Pro? As much as you want to do. I mean, look. <laughs> You're already editing it. I'm not a purist, you know, so you tell the story. You know, it's light writing. How much do you want? Don't overdo it because you can just go beyond the point where you've made your point. You've you've already made it into a black and white. Well, in Silver Effects Pro, there's a lot of things, a lot of little things you can tinker with. Tinkering. We got to avoid tinkering because you know you can tinker with a photograph, you can tinker with anything endlessly, and there is a point where it's done, and you got to recognize that and go, okay, no more tinkering. I've got my story out. That's it. 
and that's true with writing. <laughs> I can take a chapter of a book and I can tinker with it, a subject line, a photograph, a video, a PowerPoint presentation, tinker, 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 tinker. There's always something you can change. But there is a point you, you got to recognize it's done. I got my message across. That's it. The, the goal isn't perfection, it's communication. When, when have you communicated? That's it. Okay, so let's carry on and grab a few more of these. All right, this one's from John in the UK. Hey, John. Uh, and he said that he likes to capture images of the ravens and the gulls uh, at the end of his street. Yeah, I like this little interaction going on. This one is getting schooled by, <laughs> you know, the one that's landing is like getting schooled by this one here. Um, this is three-point composition. There's three points in the frame, um, you know, where I goes to, and it is a form of composition. You know, <clears throat> I'm drawn main, mainly to this one that's landing and the other, you know, kind of like that's where my eye goes first and then second to this one that's complaining over here on the left and then the other one with its kind of partial wing up. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, I guess I would, I'm going to just classify it again as part of a story. Uh, maybe it could be about these birds you know and this is a you know one of the series in that in that uh, series of photographs that's the way i see it so i wouldn't see it as a standalone but i do see it as you know here's this little drama going on amongst these birds just like people have drama birds have drama and here's you know here's what's going on at this particular moment maybe you, maybe you capture that story over several weeks you know you just keep photographing the various things that are going on with with the birds on the uh, landing on these lights you know and it just that's that's your little project i don't know i'm just saying that this could be part of a story of that time that exact shooting time or over a, a longer period of time but that's the way i see that all right we've got a photo here of wayne uh from wayne uh, this is of his his daughter, Bella. That's really uh, he's good. He's been spending so much time at home with her during quarantine, and he said he couldn't think of a better subject. Oh, that's great. Her expression is really great. You've got sort of a, you know, the leading lines here from the little toy that she's playing with. Or, yeah, right there. Those lines are leading up to her, so that works really well. Um. Just from a couple of processing things I would recommend here. On the bottom right and the bottom left, you've got the corners are dark. Actually, you've got all the corners dark. And that's really important because your eye can bounce out of a frame if, you're in, if your corners aren't dark enough. But I would darken these other brighter spots because we don't want our eye going away from her expression. So I would... I would just do local adjustments and darken um, as I'm looking at her photograph to the left. I'm not sure what that is, but there's like a box and then whatever's below it. That's the bright spot. Excuse me. <clears throat> so I just darken those areas and the curtains behind her so that our eye just stays on her. You know, and that's really an easy adjustment to make. And in the dark room, we would have done that. You know, it's called burning. You burn those spots by getting more light on the paper. You expose it longer, and you would use a piece of paper. If you guys have ever seen how this works, you have a piece of paper with a hole cut out in it, and you just burn the bright spots to bring them down. But in Photoshop and Lightroom, wow, it's so easy. But that's all. Otherwise, this works you know, it's perfect. That's just, I would, I would recommend that. Just keep your subject, you know, your eye on the subject. But I love the photograph. All right. This one is from Saad. 
and he said that he took this one while he was doing some street photography and a boy wanted to see what was inside the camera and he clicked the shutter as they were looking in. Oh, that's very cool. This was taken in Mosul City in Iraq. Uh, and we can see you reflected in the light in the eyes, which is I mean it's pretty pretty outstanding. Um I'd like to see nothing. Just be aware of cutting off body parts. So uh, we're, we're cutting off his top of his head. I can live with that. But we're cutting off his head and his chin. Maybe that's too much cut. So just pull back a little bit. Yeah. I would say you go one way or the other, but not both. So it's a little, it's just, you know, I feel like we're just too, a little too cramped in the frame. Bring it back. Just pull back a little bit. Um, I, again, I could I could see cutting the top of the head, but but then leave it, leave the chin in there just so you know we're not cutting both. But otherwise, the expression is great. It's got this wonder and the reflection of you in the in his eyes. That really is awesome. All right, a couple of more. This, you this guys, next one is oh good. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, you know, not too late to bring some others in. I don't know how, how many yep. more we have. How many more do we have? Uh, we got we got enough, but once again, I like okay. to prioritize people who are currently here. So if I see that you're posting something and you're in the chat, uh, that helps me know you're here, and I'm more likely to grab your images. So. Oh, and don't forget, we are going to be giving away oh, yeah. a photograph, right? We didn't mention that at the beginning. Yeah, we're giving away a bay photo. Stick uh, around to the end because you guys might be the winner. One of you guys. One of you guys will definitely be the winner. Okay, yeah. what is happening? <laughs> this is Robin Mitchell, uh, who, uh, if you've been watching, has some beautiful landscapes that he does. Uh -huh. So he said, it's been a while since I've used my tripod and it showed. I got out there and realized I forgot the mount screw into my camera. <coughs> so he balanced the head. Uh, he balanced the camera on the head of his tripod and then sprinted over on a frozen lake to get to that spot. And it took him a couple tries to get this right. Why do we have starburst coming out of your head? I, I mean, believe he has a headlamp on. Oh, okay. Thank you. I just couldn't figure that out. All right. Now that makes sense. Okay. Cool. It's, a, um, <clears throat> you know, it's an interesting photograph and it's a self-portrait. So now that makes more sense. <clears throat> You've run back, excuse me. <clears throat> You've run back, you've gotten yourself in position and there's the headlamp. Okay. Hey, another clever self-portrait. You guys are doing a good job with these and they're interesting. All right, let's take a couple more, and then we're going to give away a photograph. Okay, this one, this is Tomas, uh, and they called this one Beach Day. I like it. <clears throat> it's just an interesting, it's an interesting frame. And, um, you know, it could be part of a series, or it, could, it actually could stand alone, because it's, it's just clever and it's interesting we're looking at feet and <clears throat> especially the guy walking into the frame adds some vitality to it the others are kind of on the edge like letting this guy walk by um and then we've got all this other space but your eye goes right to those feet and primarily my eye goes to the guy walking into the frame it's kind of like you know anticipating the action or seeing the action, really. So good. I think it really works. And it definitely works as a black and white. All right. And we've got Joe Kim's photo. Uh, no caption with this one. Okay. <clears throat> well, I will kind of basically give you uh, more or less the same. I need to know where the center of attention is and have it more clearly defined for me it's it's a good photograph because you've got some sort of a ceremony is this a wedding or something it looks like a ceremony by this amazing lake with the clouds um 
But I think you have to move in for us to see more clearly where this where the action is. What's the center of attention? Because I've got so many different places my eye can go to. The people on the far extremes, it's the group in the center and then these other people. So again, tell me where to look. Show me where to look. You can have these other people outside of the main interest. Uh, I would just move in. Just move in tighter on the, I'm assuming this center group here is where we want to be looking. So I would just move in on them. Try to blur the other guys out if you can. And um, it'll just make it stronger as far as where we want to go. But it's framed, you know, within the environment itself is very dramatic, you know, with these heavy clouds and dark skies and... Uh, you know whatnot, but that's that's all. Just move in closer, tight, tighten it up. Okay. All right. Well, should we do one more and then do our drawing? Yeah, and if there's any questions or comments that you see, we might want to pick up. We can take up one of. Our... Uh, I haven't seen any yet. Okay. Uh, but if I do see one, I'll let you know. Yeah. So let's all grab right. one one last one here. This is from Richard. Richard. Uh, and he, the story behind this one uh, is that this was taken in Findlay Market uh, in Cincinnati, Ohio. And we're looking through a window, right? Is that what's going on? Yes. Here? Yeah. That's what it appears. It's very interesting. And it's got, you know, strong emotion of the woman like, what are you taking my photograph for? You know, she's like, not happy. But it's okay. It's a very sort of modern art um you know with with the various you know with the overlay of the reflection you know that kind of gives a, a painting look to me could be a painting I'm stepping back here black and white painting it works well you know in that re regard it's it's a it is a, a sort of a modern art photograph that of this street scene and you know i I would also probably see this as a series. Uh, perhaps other similar photographs, maybe even more reflections or whatnot. But it, on its own, it actually still, it does work. So you've done a good job there. All right, well, let's pick our winner. And we can take any last minute questions if they should come up. So right. who's going to win? All right, our, our prize. Photo. I'll say our prize first. It's a our, bay book. Well, that, not the uh, bay book. So, it's... yeah, we got a bay book, and the winner of the bay book is Maria Camp. And so, let's... congratulations, Maria. Here's what a bay book uh, looks like. Well, that there. Here we go. That's what a bay book looks like. So they're books, and you can you know you can see all these different styles you can pick that's really awesome they do a great job with books don't forget you can always get books made at bay photo and there's a little video about how to do it so awesome and say again who the winner is i'm sorry maria camp so maria. i'll reach out to you it might be a little bit because i'm guessing they're really busy right now this this is a very high rush period but they will get to you soon uh, Maria so I'll gave reach us, out to you make sure I have the right email. Uh, I just put Maria up here because she gave our very first comment. So that has nothing to do with why you won. No. But, but, you know, thank you for joining us right away. Okay, so I hope this helps you guys. And, uh, you know, my goal is, is basically when giving a critique is to help you not for any other reason and uh, you know please continue to join us now in our master class just so you know we do much more detailed uh, critiques and they're ongoing because each person in the master class has will be working on a continuing project and we'll see you know when i'm talking about you know, developing it with within a series, for instance, that's going to be part of the master class. And we're doing it in a small group. 
so we can really not just get you know my opinion of it but also hear from the other members of the group that's uh again what we did in art school was relatively small groups traveling around and looking at each person's projects so that's our that's how we do it in the master class much more again in depth and since we're we're dealing with the same group every week we're building up on their story um AYP Plus is where we're, I'm giving classes on different subjects, primarily coming out of my book here, Advancing Your Photography. There's five steps or parts of the cycle of photography, right? Visualization, knowing your equipment, <laughs> move this finger, knowing your equipment, which is really important. You got to know how that equipment works. You got to capture, which is lighting and composition. You got to edit and you get your work out to the world. And you notice I'm, I kind of cover a lot of these in these critiques. I don't, I don't necessarily hit every single one of them all the time, but those things work together as a series. And my, my classes in there will kind of revolve around those five points. Plus one other point super important which is you as the photographer and that's called personal development how are you doing behind the lens you know what things do you need to do to elevate your game and also kind of a sub part of sharing is the business side of photography and, and no matter how you look at it, you want to get your work out to the world. So that's the pattern, and that works really well. And you can, as a participant, you, you get a sense that we're building on this all the time. Just like we, I mentioned, you know, you build a series of photographs as a story. That's how these classes work, which is also very different. YouTube you know, it's kind of a free-for-all. You can grab my videos, somebody else's. You can start at any point, watch them. I wanted to build with AYP Plus a series that you watch in sequence. And that creates a different educational environment. And that's why we have created AYP Plus. So I hope you guys will join. Okay, there's a couple of ways that you can you know get in there you can buy it by the month you can get it by the quarter or you get a really big discount if you get it you know for one year so jared maybe just stick that link in there just so people can see it and uh we've got a big surprise for you guys tomorrow doton sagai i hope i'm pronouncing his name uh correctly sure that's right yeah Doton, who we had on as um, showing us Silver FX Pro, is going to show us the secret behind, and he pronounces it, Henri Cartier-Bresson. I'm not very good at that. Anyway, so Henri Cartier-Bresson, HCB, we also know him as, iconic photographer, street photographer. Tell, uh, Doton tells the story, which is really amazing. I did not know this story of how he captured his most iconic image of the guy jumping over the puddle. No idea, no clue. I thought I knew everything about this guy. I had no idea. Anyway, that's a special guest performance tomorrow at 10. You guys, it's not a live, it's a video, but tune in at 10 o'clock when it goes live. Don't miss it. I'm not kidding you. It's super important in your photography education. And Doton, I believe, will be doing some guests. You know, we have we have our guests that join us, like Dan Milner, and they present their own films. Doton will undoubtedly be a regular with us. He's doing a great job with his series. Okay. Um, other than that, I think we kind of covered everything, except to remind you guys to subscribe, enable the bell, don't miss any of our videos. Be sure to you know leave your comments. We always answer them. Like, share, tell your friends about what we're doing here, okay? Where else can they get critiquing on a show like this? And I guess happy holidays. Uh, 
stay safe, stay well, stay creative, and say it with me. Remember to get out and capture your own images of life. See you soon, you guys. Love you. Happy uh, big weekend before you know, the big holidays. Actually, we're starting. Many of the holidays are already started, so we're just moving along through them. See you soon.